welcome viewers today in this session we are going to talk about culture medium culture medium plays a very important role in any kind of microbiological studies culture medium is generally used for the growth of bacteria under artificial condition in laboratory culture medium generally consists of different kind of elements the kind of elements which is added to the culture medium depends upon the kind of bacteria which we want to grow. Generally, the bacteriological culture medium is a composition or it's a mixture of natural and synthetic compounds mixed in a fixed ratio, which is needed for the growth and development of the bacteria under lab conditions. It's generally made up of microelements, macroelements, trace elements and vitamins. It is not only the nutritional status or the composition of culture medium which plays an important role. The growth of bacteria under lab conditions or in any kind of conditions depends upon the physical environment also. For example, if we want to grow aerobic bacteria, then we need to keep them in oxygen-rich atmosphere. Similarly, if we want to grow anaerobic group of bacteria, we need to keep them in oxygen-free atmosphere. Similarly, if we want to grow the mesophilic bacteria, what are mesophilic bacteria? Those group of bacteria which grow at a temperature of 25 to 40 degrees centigrade have to be supplied with such a kind of temperature. Otherwise, they will fail to grow. It doesn't matter whether the nutrients are present in the medium. So it is not only the medium, but also the physical factors. Now generally the culture medium, they serves plenty of functions. So let us again first see what is the definition. The definition as I told you earlier, it is a mixture of natural and synthetic compounds. Now the natural and synthetic compounds are generally mixed in a defined volume of water or it is it can be again if it it is liquid culture then the type of your growth medium will be different how now suppose the culture medium which we are preparing we want to grow bacteria in liquid culture which is known as broth in microbiology so the bacteria grows in them and multiplies and forms a bacterial suspension culture if we grow bacteria on semi-solid medium with the help of agar that is so the bacteria will grow and produce discrete colonies now what is culture medium culture medium generally consists of amino acids sugars vitamins minerals and other growth factors these kind of materials are required by the bacteria Now, what is the function of culture medium? Generally, the culture medium serves many fold functions. Like, let us come to the first function of culture medium. The culture medium helps in understanding the human diseases better because we know that most microorganisms which cause diseases are microbes. And how does a microbial culture help in the diagnosis of diseases? Like, if you have a pure culture of Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae, the causative agent of cholera. Mm -hmm. Now, you inject this pure culture of Vibrio cholerae into an healthy animal. Then what will the animal produce? It will, after a short incubation time, it will produce certain disease symptoms which are characteristic of that particular Vibrio cholerae. So in this way, it helps us to understand what are the symptoms of disease and who is the causative agent for that particular disease. Similarly, the second function of culture media is it helps us to isolate pure colonies of bacteria from mixed population of bacteria. Any kind of natural habitat, be it soil, water, air, contains a mixture of microbes. Now, if you streak it on a petri plate, then what happens? The colonies, they become separated from each other and it helps us to isolate the pure culture. After we get the particular pure culture of a bacterium and if we go for morphological studies with the help of certain stains, then it helps us to understand the morphological characteristics of that bacteria, be it rod shaped or cocci shaped. 
So after knowing the morphological characteristic, we can assign a particular taxa to that group of bacteria. It helps us to isolate antigens from the bacterium. How? The antigens are generally foreign substances and these are what? Bacterial parts. These are generally used in the formation of vaccines and when it is injected into us, then it raises antibody within us. So this antigen-antibody interactions will help us to understand better how the immune system responds to vaccines. The history of the bacteriological medium dates back to the time of Louis Pasteur. He was the first person who devised liquid cultures made up of urine and meat extract to study the pathogenic group of bacteria. It was then followed by Robert Koch. He was a pioneer of Koch postulates and he was studying various pathogenic bacterium causing harmful diseases in human beings. He understood the importance of solid medium and that's why he took up potato as a base for producing solid medium. However, potato could not be used for the growth of wide number of bacteria. It is generally known that any culture medium will always be favored when it supports the growth of wide variety of microorganisms. So the potato could not be used as a source for many microbes. So it was replaced with gelatin. The gelatin is an animal tissue extract and it was used as a solidifying agent in bacteriological media. However, in due course of time, gelatin was replaced with agar. The bacteria which was growing in this gelatin-rich medium, they derived their organic nitrogen from the medium and they used to nullify the gelatin present in it. So it was then replaced with agar. It was with the help of Walter Hesse who was an assistant to Robert Koch. Walter Hesse was doing some air quality experiments and he found that agar could be used as a better solidifying agent. So in this way, agar gained popularity over the other sources as a solidifying agent for production of semi-solid bacteriological medium. Now let us move to the portion that can we cultivate all kinds of bacteria on culture medium in lab? No, it is not so. There are certain groups of bacteria which is known as VBNCs. What are VBNCs? VBNC stand for viable but not culturable bacteria. This means the bacteria are viable that is they are living but they are present in low metabolic activity and hence they are unable to grow and divide when we try to culture them in culture medium. Now these kind of bacteria can produce colonies once they retain their metabolic activity. This VBNCs are induced due to the certain adverse environmental conditions like when the temperature becomes very high or there is low oxygen concentration or there is an increase in the osmotic balance or due to some other physical factors. Besides the VBNCs, there are other groups of bacteria like the mutualistic forms or the parasitic form of bacteria which cannot be cultivated on the culture medium. This kind of bacteria require the presence of a living host to meet their nutritional requirements. For example, Mycobacterium leprae, which causes leprosis in human beings, cannot be cultivated on the culture medium. So they need the presence of an animal, especially the culture is maintained through inoculation into a mice. Why? Because they cannot meet the requirements of nutrients present in the culture medium. The culture medium generally consists of elements and chemicals which are present in fixed ratio. Now the elements can be divided further into major elements, minor elements, trace elements and vitamins. What are major elements? Major elements, as the name suggests, are present in greater proportion in the culture medium. Because these kind of elements, they form the carbon skeleton of any living cell. 
The major elements are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus. Let us now come to the minor elements. What are minor elements? The minor elements are required in small quantities in the culture medium. The types of minor elements are magnesium, calcium, iron, etc. Let us come to the trace elements. Trace elements means these kind of elements are required in traces of very small amounts. Since these are required in small amounts, so it is very di difficult to measure them exactly in the culture medium. The trace elements are nickel, cobalt, manganese, zinc, etc. Now the trace elements are again required for the successful completion of the enzymatic reactions. Vitamins. Vitamins are organic compounds and they are required for the successful completion of several enzymatic reactions. The vitamins are also required in our body. The same kind of vitamins are also required by the microbes for the successful completion of enzymatic reactions. For example, there are certain groups of bacteria which requires the presence of specific vitamins whether if these vitamins are lacking in this media then they are unable to grow. So here we can see that the culture medium is an interplay of major, minor, trace elements and vitamins in a fixed ratio. Besides the major, minor, trace elements and vitamins, sometimes the media consists of other important additives. What are the important additives? Like it may contain extracts, the extracts which are derived from the plant or animal tissues and serves as sources of organic carbon, nitrogen and energy. Again, the media may contain certain pH indicators in order to differentiate between the different kind of bacteria growing on the same media. Sodium chloride plays an important role in the culture medium and is often an ingredient in the common bacteriological media. Sodium chloride, it helps to maintain the osmotic balance of any bacterial cell. Similarly, water concentration also plays a very important role in the growth of bacteria. If the media is containing less water, then it won't be suitable for the growth of microbes in lab. Because as we all know, water is the medium in which the inorganic salts are, are solubilized and they are made available to the bacterial cell. Thus, the concentration of the water plays an important role. The agar which is added to the culture medium to provide a solid support for the growth of microbes is generally added to the bacteriological medium at a concentration of 1.5 to 2 percent. Now why agar was preferred over gelatin? Because it is relatively inert to the microbes and the microbes are unable to break down the structures of agar and agarose and thus it remains solid. On the mode of nutrition, basis of mode of nutrition, we can divide the bacteria into two groups. One is autotrophs, one is heterotrophs. Bacteria, for their metabolism, they require a constant source of energy and they also require a source of carbon for synthesizing the macromolecular structures. The source of carbon can be simple atmospheric carbon dioxide or it can be any organic carbon compounds. Similarly, the source of energy for the growth of bacteria can be, it can be derived from light source or it can be derived from the oxidation of inorganic chemical compounds. So on the basis of these two parameters, we can divide the bacteria into following groups. One is autotrophic bacteria. Amongst autotrophic bacteria, they can be of two types, photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs, also known as lithotrophic bacteria. 
Autotrophs means they derive their energy from light and they can synthesize enormous amount of complex organic compounds with the help of simple CO2 present in the atmosphere. Examples of photoautotrophs are green and purple bacteria as well as cyanophyceae. While the chemoautotrophs or chemolithotrophic bacteria, they derive their energy from oxidation of simple inorganic compounds and they require the presence of atmospheric carbon dioxide for the synthesis of organic molecules. Examples of chemolithotrophic bacteria are the iron oxidizing bacteria, sulfur oxidizing bacteria, etc. Now let us come to heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are those group of bacteria which derive their energy from oxidation of organic compounds as well as their source of carbon is also an another organic compound. Now the heterotrophs again can be divided into photoheterotrophs and chemoheterotrophs. Autotrophic bacteria, since it has got an enormous ability to synthesize macromolecules, they are generally grown in synthetic medium or defined medium. While in the case of heterotrophs, the kind of media is complex media. Why is it so? The complex media means they contain digests or extracts from animal and plant tissues which are undefined in composition and they break down this complex medium ingredients to their carbohydrate, protein, etc. Like the beef extract which we add to the medium for the cultivation of heterotrophs generally serve as sources of organic carbon to them. Plus the peptone which we add to the culture medium for the growth of heterotrophs serves as sources of nitrogen, energy or sometimes organic carbon. Similarly, the yeast extract which is derived from the yeast cell serves as a rich source of vitamin B. So that is the reason why heterotrophs are generally grown in your complex medium. If we now look at the nutritional composition of two kinds of heterotrophs, one is E. coli, another is lactobacillus, we will find that the lactobacillus is more specific in its nutritional requirements. This group of bacteria are known as fastidious bacteria as they are very specific in their growth requirements and requires the presence of certain ingredients only. For example, the E. coli can be grown in a medium composed of inorganic salts, glucose or carbon source, any carbon source or it can be your organic nitrogenous source. While lactobacillus requires the presence of organic nitrogen, inorganic salts, organic carbon as well as the presence of one or two specific vitamins and amino acids for its growth and development in the culture medium. Ma'am, then what is the mode of nutrition of those bacteria which are generally cultivated in our laboratories? Those kind of bacteria which we generally cultivate in our laboratory, they belong to the category of chemoheterotrophs because the medium which we supply to them is a mixture of inorganic salts and organic compounds. So they generally oxidize the inorganic salts as their source of energy and utilize the organic compounds present in the medium as sources of carbon for synthesizing their own carbohydrate, protein, lipids and other important metabolites. Let us move that besides bacteria, we need to cultivate the other microbes. There is fungi, algae and many other group of organisms. So now let us look at the culture medium of algae and fungi. Most of the fungi are heterotrophic in nature. Since they are heterotrophic in nature, they need to be grown in complex media. Now the type of complexity varies from one fungi or one fungus to another fungus. Generally, the media used for fungal cultivation differs from the bacterial cultivation in that the fungal medium contains a high concentration of sugar and the pH is very low in comparison to bacteriological medium. The pH used for the fungal cultivation lies in the range of 3.8 to 5.5 while the pH used for bacteriological media is from 6 to 7. Again, the common fungal cultivation medium includes potato dextrose agar, zapex stalks media, etc. 
Now let us look into the algae composition or the algal medium composition. Most of the algae are autotrophs, though there are some heterotrophic variety, but most of them, they can be grown in presence of light. And since they are autotrophs, again they can be cultured in simple minimal media or we can say simple or synthetic media in which the medium is composed only of inorganic salts because this kind of algae can synthesize their complex organic compounds from the simple inorganic salts. The most common medium used for algal cultivation is BG11. If we look at the composition of BG11, it only consists of a mixture of inorganic salts and certain trace elements. So this makes us clear that according to the nutritional status of the microbes, we will design the medium accordingly. The growth of bacteria requires both the chemical factors and the physical factors for its development. What are the physical conditions which affect the growth of bacteria? It is the temperature, pH of the medium or pH of the growth culture and it is the oxygen concentration. Let us come to temperature. We know that according to temperature, we can divide the bacteria into mainly three classes. One is psychrophiles, mesophiles and thermophiles. Psychrophiles are those group of bacteria which grow at temperature below freezing point or at zero degree centigrade. So if we want to isolate microbes from cold temperature countries, we need to incubate them in cold temperature for their growth and development on a culture medium. Now let us come to mesophiles. These are group of bacteria which grow better at a temperature of 25 to 40 degrees centigrade. Most of the microbes which we grow in our lab are generally mesophiles and the pathogens which are the causative agent of human beings are generally mesophilic in nature. Thermophiles are those group of bacteria which grow at a temperature of 45 degree and above. Let us move to the oxygen concentration. The oxygen concentration or the dissolved oxygen in the culture medium plays an important role. Again, we can divide the microbes on the basis of oxygen concentration required for their growth into the following four types. One is aerobic bacteria, anaerobic bacteria, facultative anaerobes, microaerophiles. What are aerobic bacteria? Aerobic bacteria, they require the presence of oxygen for their growth and development. While the anaerobic bacteria require complete absence of oxygen in their medium. Ma'am, I have a question. How do we cultivate anaerobic bacteria? The anaerobic bacteria can be cultivated in the lab in two ways. If we want to grow them in solid medium, then generally we go for agar dips in which the agar or the medium, molten medium containing agar is placed in culture tubes and it is solidified in an upright position. So the anaerobic bacteria are inoculated deep into the agar dip so that the oxygen does not reach them. And if we grow them in liquid culture medium, then there is a chemical called sodium thioglycolate which is used because it depletes the dissolved oxygen out of the medium, hence facilitating the growth and development of anaerobic bacteria. Besides anaerobic bacteria, there are facultative anaerobes. Facultative anaerobes are those group of organisms which do not require complete absence of oxygen for their growth and development and they can grow in presence of oxygen also. And lastly are the microaerophilic bacteria which requires very low concentration of oxygen for their growth and development. Let us now move to the third parameter of the physical condition that is the pH of the medium. pH of the medium plays a very important role as if the pH increases or decreases then the growth of the microbe will become diminished or the microbe will become dead. pH is the hydrogen ion concentration. Now we add suitable buffers like the sodium and potassium phosphates or sometimes sodium carbonate is added to the medium to maintain the pH of the medium because there are certain bacteria, acidophilic bacteria like, which prefers a low pH. 
we can say that this culture medium is generally it is a mixture of organic inorganic compounds now what type of organic or what type of inorganic compounds we will take it depends upon the nutritional status of the organism and after culturing them on the culture medium what kind of physical requirements which will provide them it depends again on the physical conditions of the bacterium in which they are growing in their natural habitat thus culture medium is nothing but an interplay of chemical and physical factors which they perform in their natural habitats also or which they are getting in their natural habitats so culture medium also reflects the creativity of a scientist through which he can isolate a pure culture of bacteria from a mixed culture or a mixed population of bacteria